Hi, I'm Imogen from Waffle TV and I'm joined here by Rob Deering. Hello. Who has um, two shows on at the Fringe this year. Um, your first show is Beat This, which is a game show. Can you tell us a bit about them? Yeah, it's, uh, Beat This is uh, like sort of one of those late night sort of Edinburgh, you could only really have it here where you know, loads of comedians come and people come after seeing other shows and after several pints of beer or uh -huh. other beverage. And uh, it's a pop quiz, but it's a free for all. The other day, I had, for example, there was, um, well, it ended up with uh, Andrew Bird being tickled by Jared Christmas as our pitcher tried to, it was basically supposed to be a kind of, this. it's ridiculous. That's uh -huh. what I'm trying to say. I'm not really catching the magic because that was Friday night and it will never happen again. But uh, yeah, so that's that one, and it's yeah. ridiculous. But it's a pop quiz, but I do all the music live, so I do mashups and medleys and things. And what do they have to do? Guess the songs, is it? Guess the songs. It's a bunch so it's of really silly, games. is it? It's very silly. It's fun. And yeah, your other show is. One. And your other show is The One? Yeah, and that's and the one. That I mean, that's the main one. <laughs> because uh, um, The One is the one I'm here to do. It's like, it, it's. Um, it's an hour of stand-up with music, and I've done that before, but I've gone for a big one this year with the whole business. It's like the Who at the Isle of Wight, you know, mm -hmm. I've got a whole, it's, I'm a one-man band, but yeah. I don't, not like with a bass drum on my back and, you know, how disastrous that can be, and vaguely, you know, mad. Mm -hmm. I'm more like, it's like there was a whole band there, but everyone just left, and then I'd do that. But I do it, you know, in the service of some uh, classic songs, yeah. some of life's great themes, like uh, sex, coffee, percussion, that kind of thing. So you basically sing the entire time, like you sing comedy? Well, I you sing, also do it's not up. sung through, it's not like, it's not operatic, oh, right, yeah. you know, it's not grand opera. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's more, it's like, there's songs in there, but there's a lot of stand-up in there too, oh, right, and so the songs are funny. Yeah. Because um, I, that's why there's a sort of, uh, doing songs with the whole band is big for me, because I haven't really got the attention span for that. Uh -huh. I normally stop and do jokes and, uh, you know, spend 10 to 20 seconds in a song before I'm flitting off to the next thing like a kind of comedy butterfly. But the, some of these songs last up as of two minutes. Mm -hmm. That's right, I'm really committed to it, stay with it. <laughs> so how did you actually get into comedy? Um, my goodness, well, it was a long time ago now. Um, mm -hmm. But I, uh, I mean, I always used to, any excuse to get up in front of a group of people and get laughs. And I used to fall over a lot, but then I got old for that, started to hurt this knee in particular. So I've stopped doing that now. Um, but I mean, at, at school and that, I'd get up in assembly and make spurious announcements just so I could get a few cheap laughs. So actually, really, I got into comedy, I was surprised I didn't get into it earlier. When I was a little bit older, I met some comedians. I was, I was living here mm -hmm. and, uh, in, Edinburgh, in Edinburgh. And, uh, and, and I was friends with some comedians, and one of them kind of got me a gig. And I did that, and I was like, Oh, you know, so it was like coming home, and I've been a comedian ever since. And why did you decide to like incorporate music into it as well? Yeah, well, I've kind of again, it's like something that I'm surprised I didn't do sooner, but I kind of fought it, yeah. you know, because I was a musician, I was a serious musician. So you wanted no to be a band or at all. I wanted to be, I kind of wanted, I wanted to be Robert Smith out of The Cure. Mm -hmm. I think if I'd never grown a sense of humour, I'd have ended up Coldplay or a much less successful Coldplay. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and then instead, you know, I got into the whole show off, the aforementioned falling over. And uh, so then when I was first a comedian, I didn't do any music at all. And then there was a little bit of acoustic guitar. And then I got a pedal and electric guitar. And then I got a loop pedal. And then it's gone, until this year, it's like a, you know, it's a master plan to take over the world with my musical instruments. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where I've ended up. And how long have you been in comedy now? 12 years. 12 years. I know. Look at that. <laughs> it's incredible, I know, isn't it? Look so young. Yeah, thanks. A little bit late. <laughs> you, yeah, you <laughs> took me too late. Yeah, it took me a while to pick that one up. <laughs> and um, at the Fringe, how many times have you performed? Because, I mean, you did this same show, the game show, the last game year as well, didn't you? So did that go down quite well? Yeah, I've been doing a. I kind of. I stopped coming to the Fringe a couple of years ago because I was. Uh, you know, because of babies and things like this. And then I used the game show to sneak back in. And that went well, so I brought it back last year but did a proper show as well. Yeah. And then this year's the second year of that, the two show year. So, and then last year that was okay, I survived it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this weekend there might have been a bit blasé. By Sunday, I was kind of crawling around going, but on the other hand, it's not like I've got a proper job. It's still only two hours work, is it? So, yeah, I'll survive. Yeah. Do you have any, um, can you tell us what type of guests are going to be on the next show for your project? I've got some good ones coming up. I don't know exactly who and when, but um, uh, I think uh, Nick Helm's coming to do it, and Lucy Porter, and uh, Daniel Ward, Lloyd Langford, J 
Josh Widdicombe, James A. Caster, Martin Moore, it, you know, yeah. it's a blooming tour. So it's quite a few, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of dudes. I mean, a lot of them yeah. are. A lot of guys. We've well, got no women on the There's women. So. There's generally, we try and have a woman because it can get a bit <laughs> testosterone yeah. in our lives, can't it? You get a bunch of men messing around, it's amazing how quickly they start going, oh, I hate you! Are they quite competitive on your show? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's brilliant that people really think they're not going to take it seriously and then they get and really then they fierce. Do. <laughs> but they can't, it's the audience who get most fierce. Really? I mean, if you ask do a couple of comedians, oh yeah, if you ask a team and they don't know and the audience knows, then the audience are going to let them know. And also let them know exactly how disappointed they are. Oh no. It's wonderful, it's great. <laughs> so they pick their teams as well? Yeah, well, the teams arrive, but they are designed. You know, they, the the audience, uh, the audience are just heavily involved throughout. They're more like more like a jury than an audience. It's it's no, it's great fun, but yeah, you'd have to see it to truly understand. Yeah. Oh well, thank you very much for this interview. So um, your show Beat This is on every Friday and Saturday at 11 p.m. and the one is on every night except for the 8th and the 14th at 8:15 p.m. Um, both at the Pleasant's Courtyard. Absolutely right. Yeah. And, uh, I can recommend my show. <laughs> Definitely go see the show. Anyway, um, yeah, keep watching Waffle TV.